for being our God and our guide. Yeah. Even now, open eyes of our minds to see as never before, our ears to hear as never before. And after seeing and hearing, help us to heed, to line up under your word. Yes. Thanking you for Jesus today. Yes. Amen. Amen. For those of you that are watching this telecast, let me thank you for joining in with us. Your presence with us, though it is unseen, it is still felt, it is still important, it is still necessary to us, and it's very important to me. Your responses are important to me. What we're going to do today, starting today, we're going to give you the privilege on our Facebook platform to raise questions during the discussion moment that is going on. I want to thank the Lord for our brother, uh, minister, friend, uh, brother Norman Moore, for monitoring what you ask. And if it's in the vein of the lesson, we pray that we'll be able to address it quickly and move on. If we are not, we can always go back and make time where we can address your questions. Amen. We've been talking about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And just wanted to share with you um, one of the messages that came this morning by way of encouragement by one of our members who said, have a purpose-filled day on today. And my response was, good morning to you, make it a great day as well. My driving purpose today is that the Bible study lesson will help hurting people that have been hiding way too long that they will know that Jesus loves them unconditionally mm -hmm. and extends to them a release and a new lease on life. Amen. Please pray for someone you know today that stands in such need. Yeah. When we may have gone over the subject of forgiveness, we're never exhausted, run to its end, know everything absolutely about it. Mm -hmm. Because as much as we can quote scripture, do we understand how to appropriate the text of scripture in light of the tough moments that we're facing? Mm -hmm. There's not a person who's watching or who is in this room who have not at some point or another had a problem forgiving him or herself. Amen. 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 And for some, that's been a long journey. And for some, they are still on the road of release. Mm -hmm. It's important to know and to understand, class, that as long as we hold ourselves in unforgiveness, mm -hmm. we cannot worship well. Yeah. We cannot live the Christian life to its fullest. Right. And so today, we're going to address the issue of self-forgiveness, and, and, and I pray that even as we move forward, that we're going to see even on a larger level this matter of the church and self-forgiveness. Yeah. Self-forgiveness is a problem in the lives of many Christians because far too many have gone through life carrying ball and chain. They've lived their lives in the shadow of past mistakes and bad decisions until they shape their todays and their tomorrows by this unending cycle. Yeah. How do we help them? Is there any help for someone who refuses to forgive him or herself? I say absolutely. Regardless of what a person may have done or whatever it may be, Know today that self-forgiveness is available. Mm -hmm. But there's a driving question. And the driving question becomes this. Do they want it? Mm -hmm. This is a process that can take a considerable amount of time. And let me stop right there and say, there are a number of people who have over-medicated themselves because of unforgiveness. Yeah. There are a lot of people who have become addicts to drugs and alcohol and a lot of other things because they have not forgiven themselves. Mm -hmm. Please know and understand 
that there are a lot of people that are in addiction, not because they want to, not because they were gravitating to drugs and alcohol. Many of them are trying to drown themselves and their sorrows and find a way out from a lot of the guilt and the shame they've been carrying for years only to even dive deeper into the problem as opposed to finding a door and a way out. Yeah. I want you to know that it is very doable and achievable. Yeah. That there is not a person alive, no matter what you may have done, that God has enough forgiveness for your wrong. Yes. That your sin is not so big that his grace cannot forgive you. Yes. The Lord is willing and he is able to forgive us. The question becomes this. Do we want him to forgive us? Sometimes the hardest things for us to do after we've done something wrong is to forgive ourselves. We tend to be our own worst enemy, our harshest critic. We beat ourselves up long after the fact God and others have forgiven us. And yes, repentance is important when we are in the wrong, but the Bible also reminds us and it provides a strong message that it is equally important, listen to this, that we learn from our mistakes and that we forgive ourselves and that we move on. Amen. Three important things. Mm -hmm. Learn from what we've done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second, that we forgive ourselves. Mm -hmm. And number three, move on. Tomorrow is going to come. What a waste of energy and time to carry over into a new tomorrow some old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Our God is a forgiving God. Yes, he is. And he is the first to forgive our sins and trespasses. And he reminds us that we must learn to forgive one another as well. Mm -hmm. Learning to forgive others also means learning to forgive others. Amen. 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 Look, if you will, at Psalms 103, Old Testament, book of Psalms, the 103rd Psalm. Verse 10 and 11. Are you there? Amen. Psalms 103, verse 10 and 11. Listen to the good news of that text. He, and that's God, yeah. has not dealt with us according to our sin. Let's stop for a second. None of us would be in this room and you wouldn't be watching if God dealt with us based on what we've done wrong. Nor punished us according to our iniquity, which is still a form of sin and aspect of doing wrong. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful and grateful to God that he has not dealt with me out of his justice, but out of his grace, love, and mercy. Look at verse 11. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. Here's good news also. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. You got to understand what the psalmist is saying there. Look at the directions in which he uses in that 11th verse when it comes to talking about God removing our sin from us. Yeah. East, west, yeah. not north and south. There's a reason for that. It is possible to go northeast and southwest. But when you're talking about going east and west, they never run into the south or the north. Yeah. The further west you go, if you just keep going west. The further east you go, you just keep going. West never runs into east. 
or catches up with it, and east never does the same thing for west. Y'all, mm -hmm. y'all, that, yeah. that, that's a thank you, Jesus, right there. Yeah. God just keeps it moving, mm -hmm. never to allow it to show up. Yeah. Well, why do we keep bringing it up? Why do we keep talking about wrong things years past that God doesn't even bring up and discuss? Right. Yeah. Why are people still walking around, don't need your lesson, like albatrosses around their neck about stuff they did as a little boy, little girl, teenager, young adult, or even an aged adult. Let, let's be clear about this. Amen. It's not just some young person struggling with self-forgiveness. No. There are some seniors that are struggling still with some unforgiveness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. why, why do you keep bringing it up? It, it hasn't changed it, and it hasn't changed you. Yeah. When are you going to let the water out of the back, out of the tub of unforgiveness? Or when are you going to stop filling the tub with more water Amen. of unforgiveness? Let me be real at first John. Chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John, chapter 1, and verse 9. Very powerful text. Very powerful text, y'all. Did y'all have y'all coffee out there? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you did. Some of us in here, we're still waiting on Maxwell House to eat yeah. or Starbucks. Yeah. All right. Look, if you will, at verse number nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, reliable and dependable to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's look at that real quick. Let's, if should yeah. win. It's not a matter of we waiting on God. It's a matter of God waiting on us. Waiting on us to be honest. In confession, confession doesn't allow or leave room for lies. It's about telling the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. No matter how old, no matter how ugly it is or was. It means coming real, yeah. being honest. If, they, if you can't be honest with God, who can you be honest with? Mm -hmm. If there's anybody I can be honest with, I'm glad that no matter what it becomes, look at what it says. It, it doesn't say certain sins, whatever it may be. Yeah. I wish I could say that about a whole lot of folks. And you do too. And maybe that's just the reason why some of us have not forgiven ourselves because we are more concerned about perception and image. Yeah. They're not going to look at me the same way. They're not going to talk to me the way they used to. They're not going to <coughs> respond to me the way that they used to. Yeah. Oh, that's another Bible study right there. Because if you are a Christian by the book, not by your terms, then you will clearly understand that if the Lord has forgiven you, who are you to not forgive your brother or your sister? It's a contest. It's just a few echoes of amen. I don't know if y'all heard it. I, I think they heard it too. I mean, honestly, some of us would, 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 would never dare tell a group of people some of the dark stuff we know. 
And we hope they never find out. What about the God who knew what you were going to do before you went there to do it? And still allows you to be forgiven. What great love. What great grace. What great mercy. And so it is on us. It's not a matter of we're waiting on God. No, God's waiting on us oh, yes. mm -hmm. to come and to be honest. And I tell you what, you'll smile a whole lot more. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You'll sleep a whole lot better. Oh, yes. Yes. yes, you will. Yes. And then there is a third text in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 7. I, I believe you know that one by that, by, by heart. Oh, yes. yeah. Casting some, oh. a few. Oh. oh, I love it when y'all come back like that so strong. Oh. Casting how many? Oh. How much? Oh. Your cares, woes, worries, concerns, unforgiven stuff on him because he cares, he cares for you. Yeah, you. You know what that says? If you are living your life like a loaded dump truck, it is not the Lord's fault. Yeah, yeah. Especially when he says you can unload today. Yeah. Let me ask you this. What you ain't know? Why haven't you done it any sooner than now? And can I tell you, now it's not too late if you will let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Why, why are you still wrestling? You know I'm talking to you. Yeah. No. Lord, forgive me. You know he's talking to you. Yeah. Why, why are you still grappling? Why, why, why do you still choose to live a life under hostage conditions? Cast it all. Letting it go. Yeah. Dumping, if you will. Not a few. Man, I wish, I wish it was like that in the church family. Yeah. I also told me to do is hear about you. And now they start acting funny toward you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The God that I know doesn't have to get FYI, school girls, get it from the great vines or gossip columns. He knows everything well in advance. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And he's more than able, willing, yeah. and ready and you ain't got to pray him into no. letting it go. No. You ain't got to butter him up. She said, give it to me. Let it go. Give it to me. Quit crying all week long. Give it to me. Yeah. Quit putting yourself in isolation. You can live a whole lot free. Yes, sir. Give it to me. Well, let's talk about some barriers to self-forgiveness. Whom or what stands in your way? Many people experience a lot of resistance, especially of their own inducement when it comes to self-forgiveness. Some only see self-forgiveness as letting yourself off the hook as if self-judgment is the only way to improve. Negative self-judgment and self-blaming can not only can serve not only as obstacles to self-forgiveness, they can also block self-improvement. Yeah. The more shame you feel about your past actions and behaviors, the more your self-esteem is lower and the less likely it is that you're going to feel motivated to either stop what you're doing or change. Mm -hmm. 
And without self-forgiveness, your level of shame will cause you to defeat yourself from taking on more shame by refusing to see your faults and not being open to forgiveness or correction. Many are at a crossroad trying to figure out how they move forward with their lives regarding self-forgiveness. But there's good news. And the good news is that you can resolve to change your behavior and forgive yourself at the same time. In fact, the more you forgive yourself, the more you're going to be motivated to change how you think and look at yourself. Mm -hmm. Still, there are many that are suffering needlessly, carrying the weight of the past and even in the right now. Mm -hmm. So, since you don't have the sheep, I'm going to walk up and show it to you. Yeah. <laughs> how you like me now? If you want a copy, friendship.baptist at AOL.com. We have clip art of three aspects. Yeah. There's a guy on the left, got a hurdle in front. Right. He looks like he's about to move toward jumping, right. but he hasn't leaped yet. Yeah. There is at the right, far right, a roadblock where there was a highway that's got road closed. Yeah. Let's just say it's not the little fella in the middle with the crooked question mark over his head. Whether which one looks like him, the left or the right. But let me ask you this. Which one looks more like you? Yeah, I know I should. But you keep letting it stay or stand in the way. Yeah. Or maybe it's not an it. Maybe it's a someone. All right. The road that leads to forgiveness gets blocked because we refuse to let there be free passage. Yes. Is there somebody in your life, in your family, somebody in your church family, don't read the lesson, please, that you have purposely put up the roadblock, road closed? Yeah. Relationship, road closed. Working together, road closed. Worshiping together. Road closed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, there, there, are, there, there, there are some people who honestly believe and have bought into the lie. Well, so if I've got a problem, I'll use me. With Mr. Tithe, mm -hmm. and I go to whatever church, and I refuse to let Mr. Tithe, when I got a problem with him, I, I won't even talk to him about it. I will not try to work through it. I will not address it. I will not reconcile it. He may not even know I got a problem with it. Yeah. So since I have gotten to the place that I will not forgive him, now I can't stand him. And since he ain't going to move his membership, I guess I will. Moving your membership, going to another church, does not resolve the problem that I have with Mr. Ty. Okay. Yeah, you can run, but you can't hide. You, you can act as though all is well when it all is broken. Joining a, another church only sends you to another place with the same issue that have not been rightly, biblically, godly resolved. Yes. Where do you find yourself at today? You thinking about joining another church because you got a problem with whoever is there and you haven't dealt with it biblically? Don't you think for a minute going somewhere else to worship is going to change the situation? 
You may not have to look at them, but God doesn't let you get off the hook. Yeah. So let's talk about these ten things real quickly. These names. Shame serves as a barrier. Yeah. You're embarrassed about what you did wrong. Self guilt serves as a barrier to self forgiveness. Self neglect. Does it not? Self-destructive habits. Getting involved in self-destructive involvements does not release a person when it comes to self-forgiveness. Look at this one. The belief that you don't deserve good things. So when negative, negative stuff when things come in your life that are not good, you can't enjoy them because you're still beating yourself up yeah. and holding yourself hostage about some yesterday matters. And you even tell yourself, you even tell other people, I don't deserve to have this. I don't deserve for these great things to happen in my life. And you know what? As long as you believe that, that's just how you're going to keep treating yourself. What about you believe that you deserve what you got? Think about that. Yeah, I deserve everything that's coming to me based on what I did. Let me tell you something. Do not, as of today, make yourself believe that you deserve what you got. Do not let someone else make you believe yeah. that you deserve what you got. Don't make the lesson. Because nobody alive has gotten everything they deserve. None of us. None of us. None of us. Uh, what about living the role of the victim? Poor me. Woe is me. Woe is me. <laughs> You know, I often wonder sometimes, and, and I know the saints need prayer, all of us need prayer. Yes, all right. I'm just wondering, how many of those pray for me requests might just be woe is me stuff? Yeah. Really fun. Yeah. Living the role of the victim. Yeah. When do you pray for yourself and believe in the God that you are praying to, that you believe other folk pray to, that they can get a pray, prayer through, except you, wait, wait a minute, wait, wait, no, 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 no. God doesn't play games like that. No. What about the unwillingness to break the cycle? We often talk or hear about generational curses. Yeah. What about how we keep inducing on ourselves the unwillingness to break the cycle of unself forgiveness? Well, I didn't forgive myself for what I did five years ago. Why am I going to do it now? When do you break the cycle? What about the failure to love yourself? How many people do you know don't really love themselves? And then, what about failure to believe that God is forgiven you? Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to begin this last part in a very unorthodox way. And uh, open the arms. There are a lot of, lot of young ladies who have pretty much been scarred for life by how they've been treated by, by the church and some folk in it. I'm going to raise this mic because I want y'all to hear this. Especially when she got pregnant out of wedlock. Come and stand before the church. The good mothers, the good deacons, and maybe even the preacher has put a young lady out on Front Street in the most embarrassing and shameful way to say you need to ask them folks sitting out there for their forgiveness. I said before, I said, you didn't crucify me at your own leisure. That a whole lot of those good folk that been sitting out in the audience want the young girl who got pregnant are to come one by one and put their arm around her and say, baby, I made the same mistake. Yes, yes. What happened to the dude that got that made her pregnant? Right, yeah. 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 Whoever stops to think long term, yeah. the damage where she may never recover. What about her family? We need to talk about the church and self-forgiveness. Yes, sir. Now, I want to say, even if the good folk at church don't forgive you, don't you let that stop you. Right. Right. Don't, don't you let that turn you away from needed worship. Too many times, people whom God is forgiven the most and the most for tend to have moments of lynching and unforgiveness. To forgive is to offer mercy to someone who has acted unjustly and release them. It's not to condone or excuse their sin. And many have walked away from, quote unquote, the church because of the failure of the church to love them, to embrace them, and help them move on. It's got a little quiet here, so I'm going to raise my voice a little bit more. <laughs> if there is any group of people yeah. who ought to always be ready to restore someone back, it ought to be the Christian. Oh, yes. It ought to be the church. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I want you to you and I will look at a situation in scripture that happened with Jesus in John chapter 8. And we got a few questions you need to answer that I believe are very pertinent and important relative to this matter concerning the church and self-forgiveness. John chapter 8, beginning at verse number 1. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in a dog. Yeah. And when they had set her in the midst before everybody, they said to him, and that's Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. <laughs> now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stolen, but what do you say? Mm -hmm. And they said this testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and rolled on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Mm -hmm. So when they continued asking him, they didn't stop. They kept on drilling him. Mm -hmm. He raised himself up, said to, to them, 
He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her throat. And again, he stooped down and brought on the ground. And then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience mm, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus raised himself up, saw no one but the woman. Listen to what he said to her. Woman, mm -hmm. where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and send a war. Can, can we do this, y'all? We're going to do it. So I raised a couple questions. First question I ask is, what message or messages do you sense from the actions of these religious leaders that brought this woman to Jesus taken in adultery? What message or messages do you Discern or get from the action of these religious leaders that brought this woman to Jesus taken in adultery. I need some responses. What messages or message do you sense from the actions of do y'all understand the question? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and I need some answers. Yes, we're allowed. But to go back a little further. How do they know she was caught in adultery? Where were they? I'm going to catch up with that later. Because all of that is very important. What you're asking is correct. But what about the question at hand? Maybe what I ought to do. Yes, ma'am. They put themselves in the place of a judge. They put the, the message is that these religious leaders, now here's what you got to understand. Pharisees and scribes were the good religious folk in the city. They represented good religion. Good religious folk, like what you said, the Lord, brought the woman in the wrong, but they brought her to the right person. For the wrong reason. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sister. <laughs> Absolutely right. But she got right results. Yeah. <laughs> what happens when the church wrongly handles a situation with sin in the life of a person? Oh. Oh, we're going to raise the stakes. They represented good religion. Good religion. Now, let's stop and think about this. Now, somebody had to tip them that she was doing something like this yeah, yeah. in order to catch her in the very act. Right. Which means that somebody was watching. How easy it is for so-called good religious church folk to watch everybody else's life except their own. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. What they doing? Yeah. What, 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 are, what, are, what, are, what are they doing? <laughs> See, a whole lot of, a lot of folk don't want to talk about this kind of stuff. And yet they don't realize people are being driven away. Oh, yeah. While the good judgmenters who cannot pass the white glove test, yeah. even now in the lives they live, yeah. as long as they keep their sin under wrap, it's all right. And then they're quick to talk about stay out of my business when they're in everybody else's business. Yes. Talk real loud. I was thinking that they know the word. They want you to live by 
by the word, but they don't want to live by the word themselves. Good, but good point. They, they, she said they know the word, but then they're not willing for someone else, let's say who in sin, to live by the word. Um, it's one thing to make great statements about knowing the word, but not doing it yourself. Just because people know chapter, book, chapter, and verse of the Bible does not mean they know the word. Amen. That's right. You can recite passages, yeah. but it does not mean that you are right with the passage you cite. Yes. Talk real loud. <clears throat> we have a comment from Sister Sheila Hill. Yes. And she said, church, the church not only hurts the person, it also hurts the church. Where is the love that we talk about instead of of just saying pray. Absolutely. 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 And it is a legitimate question. Let's look at the next one. If these religious leaders represented the quote unquote church today, where would you say, quote unquote, the church missed it when it comes to forgiveness? Because they missed it. Oh, yeah, they missed it. Where did the church then miss the need for forgiveness? Yes, real loud. Take the mask out. They didn't go to her and try to tell her the right way. They wanted to embarrass her in front of Jesus. Absolutely. Look at your text. Thank you for that. Because Jesus is not in this setting alone. Yeah. Amen. They waited until other folk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. other folk that had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. You all know how people do. Yeah. Bring people in other folks' business that ain't got nothing to do, but they want to. Okay. Yeah. Y'all tell me when y'all ready. Shame them. Mm -hmm. Gang up on somebody. Making the religious folk look good at somebody else's expense. Right. Mm -hmm. One of those people that are there supposed to leave thinking about the woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who ever stops to think about that? Let's just enlarge. Come on, y'all look at me like the yeah, right. Let's talk. Because this is not just something that just happened in the Bible. It happens today. Yes. Yeah. Now, we may not hear a whole lot about it, Regular. Mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that it doesn't, it doesn't stop from happening. Right. It sure does. Mm -hmm. Oh, it does happen. Mm -hmm. Jesus is in this teaching setting, gets interrupted mm -hmm. with mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Gets interrupted with mess by messy religious folk. Mm -hmm. Failing to think about, well, what are these people in the house or the setting going to think about them? Yeah. But then also look at how they're seeking to discredit the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Then I got another question. Yeah. Well, what messages or message do you receive from the way Jesus handled the situation? There's some messages here. Oh, yes. What message or message? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jesus was saying we all have sin. Oh. And we all can be stumbling. <laughs> Hello? Absolutely. Clean up your own backyard. Clean up your own backyard. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You who are without sin. That's right. Yes. Go ahead and rock it. <laughs> yeah. Now, he didn't say it. Watch this. Look at how wide open he left it. He didn't say those of you who are free of committing adultery. Mm -hmm. You who have not done nothing wrong. Oh, wow. Jesus has a way of enlarging the circle, doesn't he? Yeah. We may not have done what some other folk may have done, but it doesn't mean we have not done something. Hello? Yeah. Sin is sin is sin. Sin is sin. Yeah. 
Come on. Yeah. 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 You know, we are, and think about how we even color code lines. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was just a little one. Wait a minute. I didn't know they came in an assortment package. Yeah. Small, medium, large, extra large. Yeah. You know, almost like we buy eggs. You know, somebody ought to come over and talk. Yeah. You. you know, yeah. like now it's coming small, medium, <laughs> large, extra large. And then, how we color code? Yeah. Oh, I just saw the little white one. I, That's right. I, you know, <laughs> I like to see what a green one, a yellow one. What, 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 what are the other I, I mean, is this like Skittles or something? <laughs> come on, y'all. I'm trying to lighten it up. Y'all done got all mad at me and stuff. Come yeah. on, I mean, come on, because we didn't even talk about this. What messages do you receive from the way Jesus responded to the woman? Because he did respond. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Not like they wanted him to. No. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Talk your lot. Jesus forgave her mm -hmm. and basically told her, forgive yourself mm -hmm. and change your life. That's Do it. better. Wow. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Be good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. yep. After he after he invited the so-called good religious church folk. Yeah. You are without sin. Cast the first stone. Yeah. Go ahead and pick up the stones and start throwing at it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you live in a glass house, you can't afford to throw rocks. That's, That's, right. Right. That's, That's so right. That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> that is where it is. Hello? Yeah. They yeah. They do. Jesus says, he asked her a question. After they left, what does Jesus ask the woman? Where are your accusers? Where are the people who want to bring charges against you? Yeah. Y'all just start single file leaving. Leaving. Yeah. Jesus says, watch this. I don't bring charges against you either. You know, I am not a sinless man who preaches and teaches a sinless gospel. Because I need the same forgiveness yeah. that you do. No, ain't no angel wings on my <laughs> And so it's important that we understand what is the message that's here. Because the last question is, what does this lesson teach you about how to respond to forgiving regarding forgiveness? How does it teach us to respond to someone? Since we're talking about self-forgiveness, how does this lesson teach you and I mm -hmm. to respond to ourselves as it relates to self-forgiveness? Yeah. Oh, there's some lessons. Anybody want to take a crack at it? Yes, real quick. When we see sin in others, we should examine ourselves first before we uh, pass the tongue. Mm -hmm. You are without sin. Right. Yes. Ain't that what Jesus said? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you brought them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Put your, put your mask on, let me hear you. The amazing thing also is when in verse 11, Jesus says, neither do I forgive you. Go yeah. and sin no more. That's yeah. right. Okay. And even, we don't sin on purpose, God forbid, as Paul said in Romans, but if we do, he's still going to forgive us. Yeah. Right. Over and over, more than we deserve, oh, but he goes yeah. to Thank you, Bert. Watch this. Can I join in with that? Please. We'll see what do we have on him. <laughs> All right. Ready? He says, I don't condemn. I don't pass sentence. But watch this. What he don't say. He doesn't say, I condone it. No. Right. He didn't no. condone it either. No. No. Okay. Right. He said, don't do it anymore. Just don't, you know, don't do this no more. <laughs> Go. 
I, I just want to make sure I got it right because I got I got scholars in the house. Yeah. <laughs> no more. Yes, ma'am. I was going to say too. Um, I think one of the lessons is is that yes, we sin. Jesus doesn't condone, yet he doesn't condemn. So we have to learn not to condemn ourselves. He says, sin no more. Move on. Move on. Jesus forgive you. Forgive yourself and move on. Now watch this. Very good. What sin did she get She got that was brought before Jesus and everybody else that she had committed? Adultery. 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 Now, um, <clears throat> girl, don't go and keep doing that when I release you from that. Yeah. yeah, it might be your choice, but that doesn't make it right. A lot of the sin we commit is not because we can't help ourselves. Right. Yeah. All right. Name one sin you just have to commit. No. Tell me. No. We make choices. The Lord knew she if she was in a dog. But wait a minute, let's talk about it. He didn't say fornication. Oh, okay, see, yeah, see yeah. Here, here, here's, where, here's where it really get good, okay? I need some water on this one. Taken in the sin of adultery, which means, yeah, it was sexual, but it wasn't with her husband. Yeah. She was having intercourse mm -hmm. with another woman's husband. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. Last time I checked, that's adultery. That's adultery. Yeah. Fornication is sin, sex sin, as we call it, and it's pornea in the original language, though it speaks about sexual sin. Adultery is very defined. Yes. We don't even know. Let's raise it. Whoa, it's a whole lot of here, y'all. If she's calling the sin of a dog, and if she's having sex with some other man who's married to a woman, stay Yeah, yeah, that's him. Get a little excited. What's the likelihood that somebody in the crowd knows the man's wife yeah. and can't wait tell Oh, they're going to tell them. Yes, ma'am. They disregarded the law because they didn't arrest the man. I told you there were scholars in the house. Yeah. Well, what would happen to him? Yeah. Think of how even now we let folk off the hook because we want to kill somebody else yes. who got caught. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, come on. Oh, see, 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 these are the kind of conversations the church needs to be had. Yeah. So while they cross eyed looking at somebody else, make sure you got clear vision on the other half of the sin too. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. And also, we must think about all of our sins are in action, they're in thought as well. Oh, we look here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Sure. You know what? We can sin even with sight. Amen. Yeah. 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 All by yeah. All by yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm warm enough to do it. <laughs> we, often, we often condemn the folk who got caught. Yeah. What about the folk who thought? Yes, sir. Who lusted? Who wanted to be with us. Who had fantasies? Yeah. 
who had imagination. And all day. All day. Oh, my God. Yeah. All day. Oh, all day. Lord, wow. <laughs> Woo! I don't know what to say on that one. But, I mean, is it not a reality? Yes, sir. That's it. Can I tell you this? Think of how many people are dead in the eyes of other folk and they ain't got in the cemetery yet. Yeah. 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 Because the hate without a cause makes one a murderer. Think of how many folk ain't got locked up that ain't on Richard Road or Lucas Hill. Yes. Oh, what about them? They don't get off the hook. No. I think I saw another name. Oh, y'all ain't got to get it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What about Real it? Life. It said, caught in the very act. That, not just she. It had to be she and he. So they knew who he, he was. was. Yeah. Okay, but they didn't bother with him, God. They right. bothered with her being God. But look at what Jesus does. He don't say, well, where the man at? No. Jesus deals with it. He completely on a different level. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't yeah. condemn you. Throw your way and sin no more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I saw something like what Sister Fashion said. Think of how we let certain people off the hook yeah. who we may yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just keep praying for them. Yeah. 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 Jesus is working in their lives. Oh. Oh. They're going to get better. Oh, but oh, what about the other person? Oh, they ain't no good. Yeah. Yeah. They knew better. They knew better. Y'all yeah. be saying what I'm saying. Oh. Think of how we make allowances for one and we put other folk. New necks in the noose and can't wait to pull the chair from up under them. Yeah. Both of them were wrong. Yes. Right. But since you brought her to me, let me deal with her. Yeah. He would have been in his right to say, wait a minute. Go get him too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If we have a tendency, if they ain't in our group. We're going to bring the one that's not. Oh, bad. might have been another scribe. Might, yeah. might have been another third. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were a couple of folks yeah. that are our clothes. Yeah. You know, yeah. we'll cover our friends. Yeah. All right, well, you know, they don't have that problem for a long time. Just, you know, you just pray for them. Somebody else got the same problem. Child. <laughs> Can we be real? Sin is wrong. I don't care how you cut it, slice it, dice it. Sin is wrong. And God has no respect on it. Hey, Bert, yes, ma'am. Piggybacking on what? Talk about you, you can rouse you more. Now, let's look at something. I, I thank you for that. But he was, they were caught in the very act. Right in the act. Watch this. How do you release one and hang another? When they both were doing the same wrong. How do the church I don't need to say nothing else. Oh, it's because they get more money. <laughs> you don't you don't want to you don't want to preach you don't want to teach or talk about that too much because you know that's gonna dry up the financial revenue stream. So, that's right. Okay, I, I, look, I'm just talking from from where from from what from from experience. Yeah. Because folks are getting real angry when they think you pointing out they're wrong. When all you're trying to do is help to correct. Mm -hmm. So, Brian. Uh, thinking about the man and the woman, you said, why didn't they go get him? He was probably there in the crowd. The man. Wow. Was probably there in the crowd. Now, that's, that, that's the sister talking. 
Sister, sister girl said, yeah, I know where he at. He on the third row, on the left by the window. Exactly, it was a male dominated society. Let me, can I show you something? Thank you, Lord. It just brought to my attention. I, I didn't see this text for years, and, 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 and I just got to share this with you. There were other folk in the crowd. Yeah. I find it tragic. Though no other woman may have been caught, but no other woman conquers. Right. Wait a minute, you get all this teaching from Jesus. And at a good moment, for the folk who are getting the teaching to rise up and to stand with and stand by and to let her know you are not by yourself. Yeah. He has to send her out alone where there should have been folk comforting her and letting her know she's going to be all right. Why is it that we don't have that kind of, of whatever it is in church today? Yeah. Because there are some people who don't want to be identified with certain people in their lives dealing with whatever they have to deal with. Because yeah. they don't want to be talked about either because it's going to make them look bad. Yeah. There's a young man in our city whose name I will not call who has some real issues. And I remember one morning and I, been, and, and I looked for him to take him to Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> and get a sandwich and some coffee and just, let's just ride and talk. And you know, one morning, he said, you know what? You're the only person, you're the only preacher who has ever stopped mm -hmm. to make time for me. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying this to blow smoke nowhere. Mm -hmm. But whenever I, I see him, I don't ignore him, even when I can't stop and pick him up for coffee and a sandwich. I wave and he waves and we smile. Yeah. A long life's way. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen to me. Amen. Amen. And I'm always thinking, if it were me with that problem, yes, if I couldn't get the love I need out of the church, mm -hmm. I'll pray that there's somebody who would love me enough. Who would stop long enough and say, man, how about let's just go get a sandwich and a cup of Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Two cream, yeah. pump and a half of a dollar bean stirred and not shaken. <laughs> <laughs> and let's just find out how are you doing? Yeah. 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 Who cares enough yes, Lord. Yeah. in many of our sanctuaries? To pull up on somebody. Come here, Norm. From Norm. In light of what's going on in your life. In light of what failures you may have. Yeah. You are not by yourself. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Because I can. I got problems. Yeah. But, but, but. Yeah. Just know you're not by yourself. Right. Yeah. And just knowing that the Lord. Doesn't beat him up or me, right. but he loves us enough. Yeah. Let me ask you this: Why are you looking? Do you care enough? Yes, sir. Where well, other folk will not rush to stand with somebody. Are you willing to stand by somebody today? Yeah. Whatever they may have fallen in, whatever their addiction may be, whatever their habits may be, whatever their lifestyles may be. Can you love them enough to let them know that they are not alone? Amen. Yeah. yeah. So last thing I say on here is simply this. 
Free yourself from your past mistakes by forgiving yourself for what you have done or went through. Every day is another chance to start over. Yes. And this one, one Don't final, rely on me. This one final question she has. Mike G had Jesus dealt with the man alone. Might have Jesus dealt with the man alone? Yes. If he had caught up with him. Well, he knew who he was. He knew who he was. Yes. Yeah. He knew when they came up. Yeah. He, he, let, let me think about this. Why didn't he show up? Yeah. Was he afraid of being exposed? Yeah. Yeah. Was it his safety net to hide rather than to come forward? Yes. Could it be that he would have been concerned about his image, yes. perception in the eyes of others? Yes. And so it was a whole lot safer to not go to the church, yeah. mm -hmm. admit my wrong, while the other woman got put on front street. Because he didn't know how they were going to deal with her because he knew the law said so. He wasn't ready to get rocked that day. But little did he know that the rock of ages was going yeah. to redeem and ransom and reconcile. Right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. This has been great. Thank you all for your questions. Thank you for your comments. Yeah. Pray the lesson has been of great help to you. Yes. Thank you, Father, for our time. Yes, Lord. Thank you for teaching us how to let go, to live life in a more fuller, in a more responsive way. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for forgiving us. Yes, thank you. Lord. Even when we didn't forgive ourselves. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for loving us even when we wouldn't love ourselves. Help us today to forgive like you, to love like you. Jesus' name, amen.